joining us for today's webinar, learn more about how you can engage families in creating healthier schools. By the end of this session, you'll learn about the role that PTAs can play in improving school health. You'll hear from a local PTA leader who engaged families at their school in health improvement. You'll learn more about the Parents for Healthy Schools Toolkit and other resources that can help you in this process. So before we get started today, I'd like to acquaint you with some of the features of GoToWebinar if you're not familiar with it. Um, to the left is the viewer through which you'll see the content of today's presentation. Uh, to the right is the control panel and um, where you select your audio mode. Um, hopefully you all can hear me. If not, <laughs> then uh, you may need to readjust this. Um, you have the ability to call in through your telephone or use the audio on your speakers. Right now I have everyone on mute at the end of the presentation. I will open everything up, um, open up the session to questions. Um, at that time you can use the hand control or the hand icon over here on the sidebar to raise your hand to ask a question. Um, but we will, since we have everyone on mute, we'll go ahead and use the questions box. So on the little side control panel, um, just type in any questions you have in there and I will read out your questions to our panelists uh, to answer them. And right there's the questions box. So I'd like to welcome our first speaker today, National PTA President-elect Jim Accomando. Jim has served as the president of Connecticut PTSA and is very experienced with every aspect of public education. Both of his children attended public schools. His wife, Wendy, is a second grade teacher. And Jim has a K-12 teaching credential himself. Jim has extensive community volunteer experience and has been very involved in his children's education. He brings his personal experiences as an advocate, parent, and business owner to the National PTA Board, where he continues to represent the importance of family engagement in schools. Welcome, Jim. Thank you, Erin. I'm glad to be here. And welcome, everybody, um, to our webinar. <clears throat> so what does PTA bring to the table in discussions about kids' health? The answer lies in our mission, which is to make every child's potential a reality by engaging and empowering families and communities to advocate for all children. At our core, we are an advocacy organization. Research shows that there is a positive link between good health, learning, and academic performance. We would therefore be remiss to think that we can advocate for children without advocating for their health. PTAs can play an important role in increasing physical activity and improving nutrition in the school community by engaging families, teachers, administrators, and students in programs and activities that encourage the school community to be active and to eat healthy foods. That's why we are so excited to partner with the CDC and present this webinar in celebration of Healthy Lifestyles Month because it gives families, educators, and community members the information and resources they need to build healthier schools and healthier students. But more about that later. First, let's talk a little bit about the framework that PTAs use to build stronger family school partnerships, which are more effective at creating positive change. Parents often are unaware of their right to be involved in the development and implementation and evaluation of their school's practices and policies related to nutrition and physical activity. Strong family school partnerships, where parents are engaged and invested in their children's success are not beneficial uh, solely for academic and behavioral reasons. They translate into strong health policies that are successfully implemented in schools, thus improving the school's overall wellness environment and improving student health and welfare in both the short term and the long term. PTA's national standards for family school partnerships were developed with national experts and reflect the most recent research about how parents schools and communities can work together to support student achievement, and they include the following. Standard one, welcoming all families into the school community. Families are active participants in the life of the school and feel welcomed, valued, and connected to each other, to school staff, and to what students are learning and doing in class. Standard two, communicating effectively. Families and school staff engage in regular two-way meaningful communication about student learning. Standard three, supporting student success. Families and school staff continuously collaborate to support students' learning and healthy development both at home and at school. 
and have regular opportunities to strengthen their knowledge and skills to do so effectively. Standard four, speaking up for every child. Families are empowered to be advocates for their own and other children to ensure that students are treated fairly and have access to learning opportunities that will support their success. Standard five, sharing power. Families and school staff are equal partners in decisions that affect children and families and together inform, influence, and create policies, practices, and programs. Standard six, collaborating with community. Families and school staff collaborate with community members to connect students, families, and staff to expanded learning opportunities, community services, and civic participation. National PTA strives to uphold all of these standards and all of our programs so that PTAs can truly advocate for every child. In a moment, Erin will be introducing us to a local PTA leader who utilized these standards in her school and achieved recognition and grant funding as a result. Thank you so much, Jim. I'd like to welcome Amy Hoffman of Dr. Wynne Mernon PTA, who's, who will speak about her experiences working on engaging families in her school to create positive changes. Amy's PTA received the School of Excellence recognition last year, and they've received the Healthy Lifestyles grant this year. Welcome, Amy. Thank you, Erin. Hi, everyone. Like Erin said, my name is Amy Hoffman, and this is my second year as the PTA president for Mernon Elementary in San Antonio, Texas. I was asked to speak today about how PTA can help increase parental involvement and good health at your school. Next slide, please, Erin. So just to show you where we started from, I had served on the Mernon PTA board for two years prior to becoming president as their VP of Volunteers and Membership been a secretary. And during those years, the PTA board was made up of mostly staff and only one parent, which was me. PTA membership was less than a quarter of the amount of the students currently enrolled. We had little parental involvement in PTA and on campus. Our PTA did receive a few community donations for our annual silent auction, but had not created any long-lasting partnerships around the community. At the end of 2013-2014 school year, we couldn't find anybody who wanted to be the PTA president for the upcoming school year. I think I said no at least three times before finally accepting the job. I didn't feel quite qualified or knowledgeable enough yet, but I did know that I loved the students and I loved the staff at Mernon, and so that I would do my very best to do a good job for them. Next slide. My first step was to build my team. I reached out to my neighbors, church friends, parents from my kids' classes, and a few were recruited by the staff. We filled every board position with parents and a few teachers as teacher reps. I met with the principal and vice principal to ask what their expectations were for me as their new president, and their response was to lead them, which was both exciting and scary. At the school's welcome at breakfast, our PTA provided breakfast tacos, fruit and juice for the teachers. And once they were all settled, I asked the principal if I could speak to the teachers really quick. I let the teachers know how much we as parents appreciate their hard work and dedication to our children's education, and that we plan to show them throughout the school year. I also explained that we need to all work together to really make a difference in these children's lives, and asked them to please join PTA. We had 100% staff for the first time in the school history. Our PTA reached out immediately to community members such as HEB, Bowes, and Home Depot to help donate items for our events. Biggs Burgers, Chick-fil-A, and Orange Leaf helped raise money through small fundraisers that paid for classroom party, parties and programs. This is our team, PTA, principal, teachers and staff, parents, and community members. In my discussion with each, I expressed my love and commitment to the students in school. I was clear that I had high expectations and standards for all of them as part of my team. I had a vision of making a, position, a positive, long-lasting impact at Mernon and I needed their help. I felt inspired, and I passed it on to my team through servant leadership. Next slide, please. We accomplished a lot last year, but one of the most, was, most recognized success was receiving the National PTA School of Excellence Award. I attended my first district PTA meeting where they publicly congratulated three Northside schools on earning this national award, and I knew instantly that I wanted learning to earn it too. 
I literally sat in the parking lot after the meeting researching the steps we needed to take and when they need to be completed. As Mr. Akamanga mentioned earlier, the main objective of the National PTA School of Excellence Award is to strengthen family school partnerships through welcoming all the families, communicating effectively, supporting student success, speaking up for every child, sharing power, and collaborating with the community. Next slide. We were asked to focus on one specific area on a list that we believed Mernon could better develop. We chose to focus on increasing male involvement. At that same council PTA meeting, they had a representative from the Watchdog Program, which stands for Dads of Great Students. And he spoke about their program that was designed to help dads, grandpas, uncles get more involved in their student school. Just a few facts that the Watchdog representative mentioned were kids with a positive male role model had better self-esteem, higher grades and test scores, and were more likely to graduate college. Whereas students without a positive role model were likely to commit crimes, have teenage pregnancy, drop out of school, and abuse drugs and alcohol. This sounded like a pretty good reason for Mernon to implement the Watchdog Program on our campus, and thankfully our principals and teachers agreed. Next slide. The first step was to purchase the Watchdog Starter Kit that included everything we needed to successfully get started. Next, we needed a male to be our school's top dog to help run the program. And of course, my husband, Aaron, was assigned to the position. The program is designed to have the school host a pizza night in the fall and a donuts for dad in the spring. We had over 500 dads and their students attend our pizza night, which the principal said was the most parents she had ever seen attend a school event. At both events, the top dog explains how the program works and how the dads can get signed up. The watchdogs welcome the students in the morning, appear on Mernon's morning TV announcement, and take a picture with their students to hang on the wall of fame. The watchdogs then get their daily schedule that allows them time in their students' classroom, time to attend art, PE, computer, music, library, lunch, recess, and even walk the perimeter of the school and hallways for safety. The watchdog program was a great success at Mernon. The dads felt like rock stars and got to see what their students really did during the day. The students knew that their dads, grandpas, uncles, thought that they were special enough to take a day off work and spend it with them at their school. The teachers received support and appreciation from the watchdog in the classroom, and the program brought an overall enthusiasm to the school for everyone. So for our first year, as a unified team of PTA board, teachers and staff, parents, principal, and community members, Mernon received four Texas PTA membership awards, the Northside Independent School District's Most Grandparents Award, the National PTA School of Excellence Award, and their 2000 Healthy Lifestyles Grant. It was a pretty exciting year. Next slide. Oh, we'll go one more. Right? There we go. Healthy Lifestyles was our PTA's focus for 2015-2016. So it was a real blessing to receive this grant. Next slide. The Healthy Lifestyles Grant was created to help local PTAs partner with schools and engage families in creating sustainable, healthy lifestyle programs. Together, PTAs, schools, and families can use the program's tools and resources to identify and address challenges to providing healthy learning and home environments. The program focuses on the simple, everyday practice known as energy balance, finding the balance between the calories we consume and the calories we burn. Next slide. So putting this uh, program together for our school using the grant, we are having four walk or bike to school days throughout the year with two in the fall and two in the spring. Each student that participates receives a fitness spirit stick to put on their backpack. Our first day was October 28th and we had over 150 students participate. Not too bad for the first day. Next slide. Our bike rodeo with the San Antonio Police Department is in February. The first place boy and girl winners for each grade level will receive a trophy and go on to compete at city level competition. Second and third place winners will receive a ribbon, and each student that participates will receive a bike rodeo spirit stick. Next slide. A parent actually had asked me about PTA purchasing recess equipment for the students to use, and I love the idea instantly. 
We used $500 of the grant to purchase each grade level an equipment bag with two basketballs, two footballs, two soccer balls, and jump rope. Next slide. Mernon is teaming up with Milestone Strong Kids, which is a nonprofit company here in San Antonio, to bring a mud run to our school at the end of April. The company asked for a $500 donation that will go towards providing a personalized obstacle course, mud, water, and fruit for the students. T-shirts are sold separately. Each student that participates will receive a Mud Run Spirit Stick. Next slide. The last event we have planned for our Healthy Lifestyles grant is to actually host a Healthy Lifestyles Family Night where we can teach families about healthier food alternatives such as substituting quinoa or brown rice instead of white rice. We will have recipes and samples for families to taste um, of quick and inexpensive and healthy meals that they can make at home. We invited community members from a kickboxing studio, karate academy, yoga studio, Zumba, and basketball team to give brief interactive demonstrations so kids and parents can find a possible physical activity that, that they enjoy. We will also use National PTA's Energy In and Energy Out program to show families how much exercise it would take to burn off the fat food that they just ate. Our school is very excited about this special night and bringing of health and fitness to our school. Next slide. I am so grateful for the opportunity I've had to be the PTA president of Mernon. I genuinely love the students, parents, and staff. I'm proud to see what we as a community have accomplished together in only one year and look forward to what we will accomplish in the future. The key to our success was teamwork with PTA board, principal, teachers and staff, and community. And thanks so much to the National PTA for having me to be a part of their webinar today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amy. Um, next, I'd like to introduce our, our speaker from the CDC, Dr. Shannon Michael. She's a health scientist in the CDC's Division of Population Health, School Health Branch, where she serves as the lead for youth physical activity and physical education. Shannon develops science-based guidance and provides content expertise and technical assistance on strategies to improve physical education in schools and support physical activity among youth. She's also, the leading the, she's also been leading the work at CDC on parent engagement and the link between health and academic achievement. Welcome, Shannon. Thank you, Erin. And Amy, it's just so great to hear all the exciting things that um, you're doing um, at your school. Um, it's exactly a lot of the things that we're um, promoting in the resources I'm about to share. But I wanted to start with just thanking um, the National PTA for hosting this webinar today and working with the CDC to develop these new resources I'm about to share. But first, let me provide a brief rationale for these resources. Parents want their children to be healthy and academically successful. So how can they help with this? And um, if you go to the next slide, Erin. Thank you. Um, parent engagement in schools is a win for schools, parents, and most importantly, the students. Research shows that students who have parents involved in their school life do better academically and make better health decisions. Parents need to know their actions can make a difference in the school and positively impact their children. Next slide. An important connection to make for parents, as well as schools, is that healthy students do better in school. Students that are physically active, eating breakfast and healthy foods, and managing their chronic health conditions have better test scores, better grades, better school attendance, and better classroom behavior. So how can parents ensure their children are engaging in healthy behaviors at school? One strategy is to engage parents in school health activities to promote healthy eating, physical activity, and many chronic health conditions. Next slide. Data show that parents are supportive of health in schools. A recent survey showed that over 80% of parents believe providing health and nutrition services positively impacts education. Almost 75% believe physical education is an important part of education. And over half of parents believe schools should be addressing the health needs of students as a top priority. We want parents to be more than just supportive of health in schools. We want them to be engaged in helping create healthy school environments for their children. 
So making sure these things listed here are happening, but also addressing key health topics that can greatly impact their children's health and academic success. So knowing this information, um, let's go to the next slide. So knowing this information, we, um, we developed what's called Parents for Healthy Schools, which is a set of resources for schools to use to engage parents in helping them create healthy school environments. These resources focus on three health topics, nutrition, physical activity, and chronic health conditions. Next slide. We designed these resources for, for groups in the school that work directly with parents. This could be the PTA, the school wellness committee, or team, or council, or an action team for partnerships. School groups can use these resources to inform parents about the school nutrition environment and services, physical activity opportunities in the school, and managing chronic health conditions in the school setting. These resources can also be used to provide parents with strategies and actions to help make positive changes in the school environment. And as Jim mentioned, about evaluating or tracking what's happening around um, parent engagement, we've developed some resources to help track through documentation if parents are getting involved and if they are contributing to any positive changes they are seeing in the school environment. Next slide. The development of these resources was a collaborative effort. We worked with many great internal and external partners that you see listed here to develop the best resources possible for parents and for groups in the school that work with parents. Next slide. So back in 2012, CDC worked with many partners to develop CDC strategies for parent engagement in school health. Many of you or some of you may be familiar with this resource already. We use this resource as the evidence-based framework for these new resources. We also relied heavily on our CDC school health guidelines to promote healthy eating and physical activity to support the information provided for nutrition, physical activity, and chronic health conditions. In addition, there were several other important reports and research articles that are cited in, in our new resources that support the information included. Next slide. Okay, so now let's get into learning about what these resources really, what we, ha what we have available to you. So as I mentioned, Parents for Healthy Schools is a set of resources. Specifically, there's four resources. First, we have a guide that schools can use for getting parents involved, and it explains how to use all these new resources. So really, the guide is for that, for the school or for the group of um, the, the folks in the school working with parents. We also have a PowerPoint presentation to be delivered to parents. Then we have um, these one-page documents called Ideas for Parents that were, that were specifically designed for parents. And in a few minutes, I'll share with you all the different topics under these three categories you see there, nutrition, physical activity, and physical education, and chronic health conditions. I'll tell you all the subtopics that are included that I think you might find very interesting and helpful to your existing programs. And finally, we have a one-page document called Check-in Questions, and that's the document that I mentioned that helps schools consider ways to track parent engagement. So let's take a deeper dive into each one of these resources. Next slide. First, we have um, a guide for getting parents involved from kindergarten through 12th grade. The guide was designed to be used by schools or groups in the school that work with parents, like the PTA. The guide provides an overview of a healthy school environment based on the whole school, whole community, whole child model. Um, and if you're not familiar with that model, again, the guide really goes through what, what, we're talking, what we're talking about there. And what we do is we, this model has 10 components, and we're first focusing on three of the 10 components. We focused on the school nutrition environment and services. We focused on physical education and physical activity. And then health services uh, with a specific focus on managing chronic health conditions in school. The guide also explains the framework for engaging parents in school health. And I'll talk about, actually I'm not getting into much of that, but it's a, the idea is threefold. It's one about how do you connect with parents, again, making that, that environment welcoming and trusting, 
to how do you engage parents? And a lot of that work is based on Joyce Epstein's work. And then the third piece is about sustaining uh, that, um, that engagement and how do you deal with some of the challenges. And again, I'll share with you where you can find that information more um, in detail, but it's also covered briefly in um, this guide. Um, and finally, the guide can be used by the school or group in the school that works with parents to think through the process for delivering the PowerPoint presentation and the ideas for parents, and as I mentioned, how to track that, how to track that engagement. So just simply put, the guide is to help folks know how to use the presentation, the ideas for parents, the check-in questions, as well as to get some background information on healthy school environments. We can go to the next slide. The second resource is a PowerPoint presentation titled Parents for Healthy Schools, Making a Difference in Your Child's School. This presentation makes the case for healthy school environments, provides suggestions for improvement, improvements in the school, and identifies ways that parents can take action. It was designed to be delivered to parents through PTA meetings, the school wellness committee meetings, or other group meetings such as the National Network for Partnership Schools. There are only 16 slides um, with notes already provided for you and that you, can, um, that you can really tailor and then also highlight what's happening personally in your school. We also created seven new infographics for this presentation to one, be visu visually appealing, but also to provide important information to parents. We also developed an evaluation form for schools to use after they give the, pre the presentation to parents to see how parents uh, felt about it and if, they, if it, made, it made sense and if they um, uh, understood what, what, could, what they could do to take action in the school. Uh, next slide. The third resource and the one I'm most excited about is Ideas for Parents. These one-page documents highlight different aspects of the school nutrition environment and services physical activity in schools, and managing chronic health conditions in schools. Each document has the same format. It identifies the topic, for example, physical education. It identifies key questions for parents to consider about the schools, um, about what's happening in their child's school with, related to that topic. And finally, the document identifies and highlights ideas for parents um, uh, for the ways they can take action and how they can be involved in this particular area. And as Amy was sharing all the different things that they're doing, I was thinking that these one-page documents could really supplement or help um, give a little bit more information to parents uh, around those different um, topics. And I think uh, as we go through some of it, I, will, I think you'll see how. So for the next few slides, I want to share with you the infographics that were developed but also explain some of the content that is included in these resources. I'm going to start with physical education and physical activity. So if we go to the next slide. So here's, like I said, one of our new infographics that identifies the recommendation for physical activity and then shares the reality. The federal recommendation is that children and adolescents, adolescents should do 60 minutes or more of physical activity daily. However, we know from the 2013 Youth Risk Behavior Survey that less than one-third of students have been physically active at least 60 minutes every day. The reality is many students are not getting opportunities to be active in school to help them reach the recommended minutes. We use data from the 2014 School Health Policies and Practices Study, which we call SHIP, um, to show nationally that physical activity opportunities, what physical activity opportunities in school are happening and being provided to students. For example, less than 4% of schools provide daily physical education for the entire school year. And as you can see here, there's a lot of work to be done and really we believe strongly that parents can help improve these numbers. So if we go to the next slide, so going back to those ideas for parents documents that I mentioned just a few minutes ago, we developed six for physical education and physical activity plus an overview document. And we can look at them here. We have physical education, 
student fitness assessment, recess, classroom physical activity, and before and after school physical activity and staff involvement. And we align all the topics under physical, physical education and physical activity with a comprehensive school physical activity program. If you're not familiar with the model on the right and what we call comprehensive school physical activity programs, the different components, please visit our CDC Healthy Schools webpage for more information. And at the end, I'll show you where you can find that information. But what we know is that parents can play an important role in getting schools to have daily physical education, recess, and classroom physical activity breaks. They can be the voice at school board meetings and school health council meetings to advocate for comprehensive school physical activity programs and also encourage the school leadership to support this effort. Next slide. So now we're going to go and we're going to talk a little bit about the school nutrition environment and services, which includes many different aspects such as the federal school meal programs, um, the snack foods that are sold in different locations of the school, items sold for fundraising purposes, and foods that are given to students as rewards for good behavior and academic performance, or during school celebrations or classroom parties. The CDC and other national organizations recommend that schools offer and promote healthy foods and beverages in all areas of the school. However, there's still much work to, to be done. As you can see here, nearly one-fourth of schools allow soft drink companies to advertise soft drinks on vending machines. And nearly half of schools sell baked goods not low in fat, such as cookies for school fundraisers. Next slide. So schools create a healthy so schools can create a healthy school nutrition environment that supports students in making healthy choices. This includes providing access to healthy and appealing foods and beverages, consistent and accurate messaging um, about healthy eating, and opportunities to learn about and practice healthy eating. We've created seven ideas for parents um, to address various aspects of the nutrition environment. And you can see here, school meals, smart snacks, and schools. So if you're not familiar with smart snacks, you can get some of that information from that one-page document. And then it also shares with you some where you can get some additional information about the rules, and then healthy fundraisers, healthy student rewards, events and celebrations during the school day, drinking water availability, and then food marketing and school. And now we're going to go ahead and if we go to the next slide, so this is our last topic addressed, addressed by all of these resources, and it's chronic health conditions. And what we know is during the past few decades, chronic health conditions and mental health problems have increased among children. As a consequence, demand for health services has risen dramatically. The National um, Association of School Nurses state that every school-age child deserves a registered nurse, and every school should have a full-time school nurse all day, every day. However, many schools across the United States do not meet, do not meet this recommendation. According to SHIPS 2014, only about 50% of the nation's public schools have a full-time registered nurse, and others, and others may have one who works part-time, often dividing his or her hours between several school buildings. And sadly, approximately 20% of schools have no nurse at all. One recent study showed that for every dollar invested in school health services delivered by full-time registered nurses, society gains $2.20 in savings from medical care costs and loss of productivity associated with caring for children with chronic health conditions. And let's go to the next slide. So we also provide ideas for parents to help address health, many different topics, health services, supporting healthy weight, asthma, food allergies, diabetes, seizure disorders, and oral health. And this infographic or graphic on the right shows all the different areas that should be um, addressed in the school. And like I mentioned, this, this um, uh, infographic is also in, that, uh, in the PowerPoint slides that are provided to you with notes and describes this in more detail. Um, and I think, again, if you have an opportunity to look at that, we, I'd really encourage you to. Um, so if we go to the next slide, I'm going to uh, leave the different topics. I just wanted to give you all a sense and feel 
for what type of information um, are we talking about and topics that we're talking about in these resources. So I wanted to, to kind of move us to, so what are some key actions for parents? And I mentioned some specific examples for how parents can, be, can help promote physical education and physical activity, a healthy school nutrition environment, and managing chronic health conditions. And, and, and again, if you go to those one-page documents, it gives you a ton of ideas. But what, I, what we found is across all of those three topics, there are four key actions that are, are pretty consistent across all of them and help promote a healthy um, school environment. So the first is for parents, so parents can bring their voice and expertise to help with school health activities in their child's school. This can be done by attending classes on health topics supported by the school, communicating with the school about health issues, volunteering to support health activities, making decisions related to school health policies and practices, and reinforcing health messages taught um, in school at home. Another thing that parents can do is help, help implement the local school wellness policies as well as other school board policies that focus on these different health topics. They can also ask the school to provide education opp educational opportunities to learn about the connection between health and academic achievement, the importance of healthy eating and physical activity, and ways to support their child with a chronic health condition. And finally, they can join a group such as the PTA that supports and can address a healthy school environment. And as Amy mentioned, it's about building the team. It's, getting, it's being able to convey why they should be involved in, in, these, um, in these activities. And what, what we say is the reason why is because their kids are going to be healthier. And when they're healthier, they're going to be ready to learn. Um, so if we go to the next slide. The other one last thing I wanted to point about in terms of the resources that I've mentioned a couple times were the check-in questions. Um, the check-in questions provide some examples of change that you can see or hear of from school staff or a school group mem or school group members after sharing the PowerPoint slides and the um, parent idea sheet. The idea is that you would review your activities and choose or develop check-in questions that best align with the types of activities that you use. And again, you'll, there's, a, there's a, several questions in this one-page document that you can select from. Um, and what I wanted, if we can go to the next slide. I wanted just to um, let you know about some key activities to know about and to share. So all of these resources that I just shared, these four resources, and we call this whole set of resources is what we call Parents for Healthy Schools. It was released last Wednesday, November the 4th. Um, today, this afternoon, we are going to have a CDC web feature come out. That means that on our CDC main web, uh, web page, um, it'll be an article that talks about the importance of engaging parents in school health and what they can do. Another important event that I wanted to share with you is that on Thursday, November 19th at 2 p.m., we are having a Twitter chat um, about Parents for Healthy Schools. And we hope if you are active on social media for you to participate in that event. And then the other exciting thing that we're doing is um, we're developing a CDC e-learning course for Parents for Healthy Schools that will be tied to um, continuing education units. Um, and that will be released probably late spring of 2016. And if we go to the next slide. Now what I wanted to do is actually show you the website and show you how you can access all of these different um, resources. So Erin, if you could uh, share with us the, the web page, great. Um, and actually, can we go back one page? I want to just share um, our Healthy Schools website. So if you go, if you search Healthy Schools and CDC, you'll get to this, um, to this web page. Um, I don't know if you're able to do that. But let's see. Oh, maybe not. Um, and so on that, um, on the web page for, um, for healthy schools. If you maybe if, I don't know if you can select that up for just the healthy schools. Um, okay. Maybe oh perfect. 
Perfect. Okay, so here, so if, as I mentioned, there's a couple things that I mentioned throughout the presentation. If you want more information just about the nutrition environment, you can select that first tab that you see there, nutrition environment. If you want information about comprehensive school physical activity programs, you go to the physical activity button. There's information about obesity prevention, and then also the resources that we have on chronic um, conditions. And then if you scroll down a little bit more, if you're really interested in making that connection between health and academic achievement, there's a lot of resources on the tab that says health and academics. We just recently, um, a year and a half ago, came out with uh, some really great resources that can help you make the case. Um, so I would encourage you to check that out. But today we're going to focus on the next button down, Parents for Healthy Schools which is um, all the resources I just shared with you. So if we can go to that page, Erin, um, that would be great. Excellent. So here's the main landing page for Parents for Healthy Schools. And it gives you a little background information. And if you scroll down, you'll see a set of tabs, lots of different tabs. The first is parent engagement. It just tells you what parent engagement is. But if you scroll down further, it talks about the framework that, that I mentioned, the connecting, engaging, sustaining. And then you come to Parents for Healthy Schools, which shows all the res those four different resources that I mentioned, the guide, the slide, uh, the PowerPoint slides, uh, the, idea, the ideas for parents, which I'm going to give you a little sneak peek of those in just a minute, and then the um, check-in questions. And if we scroll down just a little bit further, we get to um, just some effective ways schools can use these resources. So it just gives you some ideas of how it was intended to, to be used. But again, I'm sure you all are creative and might use it in a variety of other ways, which is great. And we hope we can capture some of your successes. OK, Erin, let's go back to the, um, to the tabs. And we're just, I'm just going to tab over each one. I just want to show them. And we'll, we'll hold on physical activity in a minute. So we have nutrition, if we can tab to nutrition. And you'll see here, we give a little blurb about nutrition. We talk about the different um, ideas for parents. And I told you there were several of them. And they have their, there's an individual sheet for each one. And then here are the um, infographics. So, and we have it in three different formats. We have it in the P, a PDF, JPEG, and PNG. So please use it however you like in your PowerPoint presentations um, to folks or in other print materials. Uh, again, they're there for you to use. And we've explained what they are. So hopefully, um, not only here on this side, but also in the PowerPoint, it gives a little bit of a deeper um, explanation. And if we go back up to the tabs, we'll tab over to um, physical activity. And we do we have the same the same format. But this time, I, let's go ahead and open one of the ideas for parents. So if we go to the classroom physical activity um, document, it's a, and I just want to give you a, a sense of what's there. So as I mentioned, um, as it's loading, we have three sections that we've developed. And they are, again, similar for every idea for parents. Um, it's populating. It's slowly coming, um, I think. Uh, perfect. Here we go. Um, so as I mentioned at the very top, it just gives you a brief overview and the science behind that particular um, uh, aspect of that particular, that particular topic, so classroom physical activity. The next section, what's happening at school, we talk about what's happening at your kids, at your child's school. We want to know, we, have, we ask a series of questions so that you can get a sense of if, if, the, if the school is offering classroom physical activity. And then the last section, which is on the second page, gives parents ideas for how they can support and be involved in providing um, uh, classroom physical activity breaks. Um, so that gives you just a quick snapshot of how these, how we formatted the ideas for parents. And if we go back to the web page, Erin, um, we do that also for chronic health conditions. So if we just hit that tab, I'll just show them that. That's great. And then we're going to go one other, we have two other tabs, the promotion kit. So if you're, if you're super savvy with promoting items or in social media, we have just the thing for you. So if we click the promotion um, kit tab and go ahead and open that PDF, Parents for Healthy Schools promotion kit, there's several things in here for you. The first page just goes over what resources, those four resources that I've mentioned, but also 
what's included in this kit, the items included in this kit, which you can see right there. There's several things, and I'm going to go quickly over these. So the first one is using the Parents for Healthy Schools resources. So again, how to use it. The second thing is sample social media posts, and we have um, information for Twitter. You can scroll down, Erin. We can go Twitter, and then we have Facebook posts. So again, pulling this and sharing it as much as you all can would be great. We'd really appreciate it. And then we also have our own Pinterest um, page, and um, um, CDC's Healthy Schools Pinterest board, actually. And it has all of those infographics, and we hope you can pin some of those. And then again, here just lists all the infographics for you. If we can keep on scrolling past these infographics, that would be great. Um, and then what I wanted to point out is just a couple other things that are available in this uh, promotion kit. There's the web badge, uh, and it tells you how to, how to use this with all the embed code, and that's just for the resources. And if we scroll down, if you want to promote the Twitter chat, we also provide um, information for the, the badge for the Twitter chat and also uh, content syndication information as well. Um, and we can scroll down a little bit more. We have a rollout calendar of all the events I mentioned, so you can keep, keep, um, keep track of that. And then also have identified um, health deservances to promote um, parents for healthy schools. So if you want to focus in on a particular month and highlight a particular topic, um, that's our plan. So I just wanted to highlight that for you all. And then at the very end, we have just a couple more things. Again, other ideas to promote Parents for Healthy Schools, and then template text. So if you are a blogger or you have a newsletter, you can, use, you can um, pull some of this information to promote um, Parents for Healthy Schools. And then uh, if we go back to the web page, the last thing I wanted to mention, um, the last thing I wanted to mention was the strategy document, which is the very last tab. And the strategy document, again, I mentioned um, in the uh, in my presentation that we base Parents for Healthy Schools off these off the, the strategies document, and um, it's there for you for you if you want to get the background information. And then we've also a couple years developed a facilitator's guide for staff development in terms of promoting parent engagement in healthy schools. And we also have some even even brief uh, fact sheets for different audiences at the end. It's an overview brochure, but also. Uh, some things that uh, school districts and administrators can focus on, teachers and other school staff, and then parents and families. So that's, that's it from me, Erin. Thank you all. Again, thank you for letting me be part of this um, webinar. I really appreciate it and look forward to questions. Of course. Thank you so much for joining us, Shannon. Um, and at this time, I'm going to go back to our, our PowerPoint, and I'll be taking uh, questions as soon as I pull that up. Um, so at this point in time, if you have any questions that you would like to, um, you know, ask any of our, our panelists, uh, feel free to type them into the questions box. I know we have a lot of attendees today, but I'll try to get through as many as possible um, and try and, and delve into this a little bit further. Um, I, I did see that earlier we did have someone um, ask about um, the, the pizza night and the donuts for dads um, in relation to healthier schools. And I, and I think that's always a challenge when you're doing um, events at your school to, to do something that is going to be fun and that the kids are going to want to do. And sometimes, you know, we do ice cream parties or we do pizza parties, and it's not always necessarily the healthiest choices. Um, but I, I also think that it's, um, it, there's a balance, and I think that we talk about that when we talk about the energy balance of, you know, calories in, calories out. Um, and, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, no uh, fun, <laughs> fun time foods at all anymore, but, you know, occasionally in moderation, um, especially when you want to have those fun festive events. Yep, and this is Shannon. We actually, mm -hmm. in one of our handouts um, on uh, school celebrations and, you know, events, uh, we talk about um, different ideas um, that, uh, uh, you know, that people can think about in terms of if they don't want to do like a Donuts for Dads, uh, which again, you know, if we were trying to really promote healthy opportunities, how can, you know, what are some other, what are some alternative ideas? And we provide some of that. Yeah, great. Thank you so much, Shannon. Um, mm -hmm. I, I did get a bunch of other questions um, that were all the, the same about the resources, so I'll go ahead and touch on that. Um, a lot of people are asking if the Parents for Healthy School resources are available in other languages, like Spanish. 
That is a really great question, and I'm so glad that that's, that that's being brought up. So we are um, planning on translating these resources into Spanish, and we're working on that. And if and if we're able, we're just making sure we have the resources to do that, and we're getting at the moment we're getting uh, estimates on that. And we, if we're able to do it, it'll it'll come out next spring. Great, thank you. Um, if someone else just typed in "fruit for fathers," I guess as an alternative <laughs> for, for dad. So thank you for for that suggestion. Um, mm -hmm. uh, several people have asked if we'll, they would be able to get a downloadable copy or a printable version of our PowerPoint presentation today. Um, uh, Shannon, I, I don't know if, if this version is, is shareable. I know that there is the Parents for Healthy Schools PowerPoint that they can download on the site. Is that the same? They, um, it, it's actually the PowerPoint presentation is, uh, is very different because the PowerPoint presentation on the website is for parents. So it's, it's, a, it's a definitely a different style presentation. Mm -hmm. I am very happy to be able to um, share these slides with anybody uh, that just emails you, I mean, that, that requests that. I don't think we'll do a big email out, but whoever wants them, they can have them. Okay, great. So, mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, we, we can send those out to all um, people who registered who are interested in getting the copies. Uh, additionally, there are the versions that are for parents um, that are available on the website. Um, someone else mentioned, is there a way to have copies mailed to them? Unfortunately, I know for at least a national PTA's um, part, we, we don't have the, the capacity to print and mail copies, um, but we will definitely share all the digital versions that we can get out to everyone. Um, Someone else asked, what was the name of the study of physical activity? And they were asking if it was STIPS? Um, I've, what, uh, what, particular, what particular study? Um, I, I didn't, I, are they talking about the, what, what uh, were they interested in um, the, where the national guidance comes from for the 60 minutes? Is that the? I, I think so. Um, if if the national, they could yeah, elaborate, so that'd be great. <laughs> Sure. So the 60 minutes comes from um, the National Physical Activity Guidelines um, that was uh, that was written in 2008, and they're probably going to update them soon. We're in the we just found out that it's probably in that process. But again, there is uh, it was a review, it was a committee by the Department of Health that was put together to um, to look at the science behind levels of physical activity, and so that was their recommendation of 60 minutes. Right. At least 60 minutes every day for okay. for children and adolescents. And I can, um, if they want the, I'm happy, Erin, um, to share with you the where that that document. And if mm -hmm. you want me, and you can send it to the person if if, if you want. Okay, great. Um, we did we did get someone else who asked about um, how most of these materials feel like they're geared a lot towards elementary age children. Um, are, is there anything that's more specific relating to older children, adolescents, middle school, high school age? So we, you know, you know, it's very hard, right, um, to include all levels and all levels. But we really feel there is definitely most of the content that we provided really, really does, um, uh, could really uh, spans all three grade levels, especially the content, the the, the topic content, and um, they would. Uh, so we kind of kept it pretty broad. We don't have anything that we say this is for middle school, this is for high school, this is for elementary. Um, but we may in the future do a little bit more tweaking and provide some additional um, um, ideas, especially for the secondary schools. Okay. Um, let's see. How, okay, this is more PTA. I'll try to touch on this, and I know Amy and Jim may also be able to expand on it a little bit. How do the PTA standards for parent and family engagement compare to the national network for partnership school standards? Um, that's actually a good question. I am not as familiar with the national network for partnership school standards, um, so I, I might have to look into that a little bit more. Um, this is um, Shannon. I'm, this, that's mm -hmm. uh, a lot of Joyce Epstein's work. I'm there. Okay. Work, actually, in actually, the work that we've done has been hand in hand with Joyce Epstein. And you know, the thing is, is I mean, she has. I'm assuming they're talking about the um, six uh, types of engage, six types of involvement. Um, and again, our resources. Uh, really follow along with that. And I think that they were talking then about your standards at the very beginning that um, Jim was sharing. 
Mm -hmm. And I feel that I think that they're somewhat overlapping. They sit, again, it's just it's a different perspective, I think, um, in terms of standards and types of involvement. But I, um, but what I think is that they really do complement each other. And we just need to think about um, what that means in terms of the school building. So I don't know if that helps. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a, a good answer. Um, any suggestions for collaborating with a local public hospital um, who, hospitals who have community service missions. So is that, uh, is that I mean, I think, <laughs> I, I think, well, I, I think community partnershiping is such a smart idea, right? Mm -hmm. um, um, it really, I don't know, um, can you repeat the question one more time for me? Just yeah, so yeah. Um, suggestions for collaborating with local public hospitals who have a community service mission. Hmm. Um, I think for, think a little for PTA, um, we, we had done a 5K last year, and we had booths set up for people to monitor um, blood pressure and things like that. So that could be something they could possibly provide for the school at events, is to do um, some type of health care information for, for your school. Yeah, and that's actually a really good idea, Amy. And then I was thinking, you know, we talk about, the. I mean, there's lots of ways that the community can come into the school and teach about uh, different aspects of health, but also at parent at, at those parent events. So that, I, that even might be like a hook to get parents involved is to be providing some of those health services that they might not have access to. And that could be a service that they provide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a great point. Um, someone else asked about um, their school had to cut out all food incentives this year, and they would love to know some other alternative non-food incentives for the activities. Oh, that's great. Um, so again, our um, our one-page documents provide some of that. So if they go to if they go to the nutrition tab, they'll find different ideas there. But also, our, our other partner that we develop these resources with, Action for Healthy Kids, they also um, and it's also linked in our if they go to the resource section in our guide. They provide a lot of information for schools and parents and provide a lot of alter there's one document in particular that provides a lot of alternatives to um, uh, food incentives. So if they, uh, I don't know, uh, Aaron, I can send you that document as well that you can include in the email back out. I don't know. That would be helpful. Yeah. Yeah, I could include that um, on, in an email to all registered attendees as well. Great. I'll um, give you the federal document, and then I'll give you that Action for Healthy Kids document. Great. And, our, and then. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, someone else was asking um, about the, these materials in relation to working with low-income families, low-income students, especially in more urban school districts. Are there any special mm -hmm. considerations for those, those um, populations? We did not in these particular documents. It's a really good question. Um, we are doing a little bit more work around, uh, especially with physical physical activity and physical education around urban um, and urban settings. And, but what we found, you know, it's more uh, some of the things that we're encouraging parents to do would be appropriate across, you know, multiple settings. But again, we do we may go back and do another little. Uh, when I say little, another another review and figure out if, if there's some other specific messages that we should be sharing around urban and urban and rural districts, school districts. But we don't have that available now. Mm -hmm. um, and and of course, I mean this is just um, the sidebar from PTA perspective and, and some of my work with AmeriCorps and working with um, the Urban Family Engagement Network. Um, when you're working with those populations, just always, you know, work with the community to find out what, um, you know, what their needs are, because each community usually faces unique challenges, and um, you know, that way you can kind of help to supply the resources that they are in the most need of, um, whether it is having the area to do physical activity or having the access to um, mm -hmm. the healthier food options and, and introducing those options to them. Mm -hmm. And that's um, actually a really good point. Mm -hmm. I was just going to even piggyback off that. That's a really yeah. good point in terms of when we talk about connecting with parents. Again, if we really want parents engaged in the school, we also need to know what their need, what their needs are and mm -hmm. what might get them there too. So, so. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and, and someone else, I think, um, just brought up again accessing um, this presentation for anyone who couldn't attend today. Um, again, we'll, we're going to record this, and we will publish this out. We'll send it out to everyone who registered, and I believe we'll probably also have it published on the PTA website, and I will also share it with um, Shannon and our other panelists so that they can share it through their networks as well, um, so that recording should be available to everyone. Um, someone else asked about incorporating social emotional skills into health education in, in a classroom setting K through 12, and I know that's you know a, a really um, needed way to integrate everything, but um, it's also I know a challenge. Um, Shannon, do you have any other insights into the integration of you know social emotional along with physical and health? Yeah, I mean, we find that extremely important. In fact, um, I just uh, uh, was an author in a recent review looking at the whole um, the whole school, whole community, whole child model and looking at the different components and how that's associated with health and academic outcomes. And what would I find is, and what we did a review um, around uh, mental mental health, and what we what we see is that those programs that address social emotional learning has a positive impact not only on their health outcomes but also their academic outcomes. So that's an area that I know um, our group at CDC is interested in and we may be doing some further work in that in that area as time time allows. Great. Um, and, and I just had someone else from a, a lower income school district um, say that they're always seeking funds and funding to, to try and implement some of these things and what are some ways that they can do these types of activities and improve the school health culture um, with minimal funds available. And I'll just go ahead and, and let you know also um, there are things such as the Healthy Lifestyles Grant Program that National PTA does that you can find at um, our website at pta.org slash awards. We usually list all of our um, grants that are available at that point in time. Some of them do touch on different topic areas, but we have health and safety grants available. Um, but Shannon, do you also have any other suggestions for how they can maybe work around not re having the funding at that point in time? Yeah, and it, it, you know, this is, I think probably, I've heard this request or this question multiple times over the last few months. And what we've been talking about uh, internally is that we need to create a document that's that kind of talks about no cost, things that you can do that at no cost, that you can start showing uh, differences in your school your school health environment. What are some low cost items? And then of course, what are some things that might cost a little bit more or you need a grant to do? And so we internally are talking about developing a resource like that based on all the, based on the research, it's, and again, based on the research that we know, and um, hopefully we'll be able to provide something in 2016 that highlights those things. Right. And, and someone else just, I think, pointed out, um, is there a list um, for school-based grants or helping healthy um, health activities by state and city? Um, off the top of my head, I'm thinking of the, the grants um, listing. I think that there is an aggregator out there of, of a listing of all the different, um, at least maybe federal grants. I'm not sure if maybe I'm yeah. in the wrong track. <laughs> Yeah, no, this is Shannon too. No, I know this is something else I also get is that they're like, it needs, we, we, need, we need to know all these programs uh, you know, in one spot and we also need them to be somewhat an easy process to develop. I don't want to spend you know, 40 hours to develop something and to write a grant that I'm only getting you know, $500 or $1,000. So again, uh, I, don't, I don't know of anything that kind of has it all in one spot. Um, and that's, uh, um, but I do know, um, that we, I know at CDC we try to highlight some of those on our on our on our pages. Um, but that's maybe something else I can also bring back to talk about how we can maybe do a better job at highlighting some of those those grant opportunities. Yes, yes, absolutely. And, and someone else earlier had asked um, about the intersection um, with with this and, and Fuel Up to Play 60. I know PTA has previously collaborated a little bit with the Fuel Up to Play 60 program, um, but they were mentioning also additionally that um, Fuel Up to Play 60 does offer $4,000 grants um, to, to schools every year. So that's another program where there is some grant funding available. Um, and, yep. you know, there's I feel like there's a lot out there. 
Yeah, and the, and the other one that I should promote is, is the pre Presidential Youth Fitness Program. Uh, we collaborate with them often, and they have, they do grant programs as well. And it's, it's, it's about fitness education, and it's a, that's an, an important part in physical education that should be addressed. Mm -hmm. um, I know as far as the, uh, the calories in, calories out, um, healthy lifestyles uh, grant program, someone else was asking if the calories in, calories out addresses caloric needs of, of student athletes. Um, and I, I believe that, I'm not sure that it, it really expands deeply on specifically student athletes, um, but just the overall principle of, you know, what you're expending out, um, you need to re-energize and put more in, or, or, you know, what you're taking in needs to, to be balanced out with how much you exert back out. Um, so I, I believe that it, it's, in a way, it's touching on that because, you know, the student athletes are um, exerting more energy out, and so that needs to be taken into consideration with the, the calories going in. Um, but if anyone else has anything else to add about, uh, you know, student athletes in particular with the energy in, energy out, I feel free to, to add on. Mm -mm. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I think you did a great job. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I, I've got so many, so many different um, uh, inquiries from from our, our great audience, um, and and some some other people are asking if they need to sign up to receive the copy or the recording. You don't need to. Um, as long as you signed up and registered, I will be able to email it out to you guys. So you don't need to worry about trying to sign up or or shoot me your email. Um, you should be on the registrant list, and so I can just send that back out. Um, let's see. Uh, someone else pointed out that they work with a hospital wellness center and that they have incorporated a youth program as a segue to enter the schools and advocate for changes in school health policy. And they call oh, it the coordinated, yeah, coordinated approach to child health is what they're calling it. Um, but I, you know, there's a, I think another great idea as far as the partnering with the, the community organizations and community partners um, and working with the hospitals in the area. And our, our resources really didn't focus necessarily on, on that, but again, that's where parents also work. That's another way to, as parents work at all these different places. And again, parents, if we can figure out what they have, they can offer something very unique to a, to a school. So again, seeing what parents can, can offer is, or asking what their, maybe what a unique contribution might be from, that, from a parent is important to, to check out. Yes, or to yes ask. exactly. Yeah. And, and someone else, um, asked, you know, is there a good way to manage vending machines at the schools when the distributors seem to have the control over what they're putting in the machines? Um, has anyone found a very good policy dealing with these vending machines that seems to work, or is, is there a good strategy to approach that? Actually, that's a great question for uh, our, um, we have a, a lead for, uh, for nutrition um, in, our, in our branch, Caitlin Merlot. She would be a really good person to follow up on that. If you can send me that question, I'd be happy to get it answered um, by by a, by somebody that really focuses on vending machines. She's actually okay. doing a national study on that. Yeah, I'll I'll try and send that over to you. Um, someone else in this I think is is more of a uh, uh, a, a point of interest, but they were saying, let me find it about the, they were giving out the fruits. They did a, fr a fruitarian week <laughs> in spring last year. <laughs> they worked with the campus to have certain fruit choices available on specific days. They gave the kids a chance to participate, whether they brought lunch or bought one, and they had the highest participation ever. They had a, a huge em emphasis on, um, oh, I'm sorry, that was the running in the next one. Um, oh, they have a huge um, refugee population at that school, that, so there was a suggestion for healthy foods instead of sugary snacks. I think that's all part of the same statement. Wow. Um, oh, I would love to hear some of these. If, if folks are posting some successes, that's mm -hmm. something that we're very interested in. So I don't know, Erin, um, if you're able to share that with me. Um, yeah, I'll try. <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting lots of, of great um, tips and and you know, success stories in here, so I'll try and, and collect all of those. Um, as someone else did point out, um, they were interested why um, it didn't seem like drug abuse or mental health um, topics were part of this initiative as much. Um, is there, I know there are resources out there available, but um, do you want to expand on that a little bit? Was that question for, I'm sorry, I didn't uh, <laughs> repeat that? 
Yeah, yeah. Um, they they were basically asking why uh, drug abuse, mental health, um, were separated out from from this toolkit as much. I, I know that there are a lot of uh, federal resources around, you know, like SAMHSA has a lot of the mental health substance abuse stuff, um, but I think they were just kind of curious why that wasn't included in this toolkit. Right. So um, that's a really good question. Um, th those are absolutely very important. Um, so just the work that we do in the healthy school branch focuses across those three topics, physical activity, nutrition, and chronic health conditions. So a lot of our resources uh, focus on those areas. And so that's, that's particular, what's one reason why we focus on, on that. But also, we felt that there's a lot of, exam a lot of examples in, uh, around um, parent engagement across these three topics. And so that was another reason uh, that we included and something that they could also address at home um, um, pretty reasonably as well. Yes, and and this kind of goes back, but I saw just saw where someone entered in regarding like the vending machines, um, smart snacks, um, which I know is I am not as well versed on the details of of that um, uh, information for the smart snacks policy, but um, they're saying there is some information through that as well as through the state education department, um, and that 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 might be an avenue to explore in order to address the the vending stock um, issue. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, let's see, I think I've tried to make sure I caught as many of the questions as possible. Um, I think that might be it. Make sure I didn't miss anything. All right, well, I think we'll go ahead and wrap it up. I'm going to try and get um, the recording out as soon as possible, hopefully by tomorrow, to all the registrants. Um, we'll have the, the recording um, up on our website within the next couple of days, and I'll also be able to share it through everyone who is a panelist today. Um, and we'll try to get those additional files out to everyone and, and make sure that we have tracked all the input and questions from everyone who attended today. today. So thank you, Amy. Thank you, Jim. Thank you so much, Shannon. Um, if anyone has any other questions, let me pull up our last page. Um, you can reach us at programs at pta.org. On pta.org, our health and safety section, we have more information about Healthy Lifestyles Grant as well as our other health and safety programs. Um, so thank you all so much. Yeah, Great. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye, -bye. All right. Bye.